is now you have a, the same issue. I won't go into that one here because it's a credit card, but if you had two checking accounts, then you can imagine the second that you could imagine using a deposit form, right? If there was a deposit going into your checking account and it was coming from the savings cash account, then you might say, okay, I'm going to use a deposit form to increase the checking account. That would be fine looking here. But if you looked at the other account, the savings account, it would have a deposit form with a negative amount decrease in the checking account with a deposit form which messes up your sorting by transaction. That's why if it was going to a checking to checking account, you usually use a transfer form as opposed to a deposit or expense form. All three of them work. They do the same transaction in terms of journal entries. The same accounts are affected, go in the same direction, but they don't look quite as quite right when you sort the detail. And then the credit card, the payment of the credit card, is kind of like a transfer form, but they wanted to add another one for the credit card payment, I guess, to be more specific. So let's go over here and, and now I'm on the credit. Let's say we initiated the transaction from the credit card side of things. And just to test it out, it's picking up the record as a credit card, which is probably the one you want to use. But let's just try to use the record as transfer just so you can see the difference. So now I'm just going to it's going to do the same thing. Right. But now I'm just going to use a transfer form uh, and that and that'll be a similar kind of kind of item. You could use a category if you use the category form over here it might it might actually use a deposit but that would be a little bit unusual to use a deposit form on a credit card so let's try to use a transfer form and record it that way starting from the credit card side and it says category is not selected uh transaction transfer from i'm going to say the checking account so checking account boom all right, so there it is. That's right. Okay, let's add it. And so then the other side would be on the checking account. So if I go to the checking account, I have now initiated it first from the credit card. It has now matched it as a transfer on the checking account. So if I if I check it off here, nothing new is going to be added. We've just changed it to a transfer form as opposed to a credit card payment. So then if I go to my forms and I run it and I look at my checking account, now I should have a transfer form. So it looks like this. So, so that looks fine because the transfer could be an increase or decrease depending on which way the transfer is going. So transfer is a little bit tricky because again, it could go either way. Uh, if I'm trying to sort my, my, my cash by all decreases and all increases, the transfers kind of mess things up because it's possible that the transfer could be an increase, you know, or a decrease. It would be nice if I could maybe like record all my increases as like deposits, for example, and then use the transfers to record the decrease to my major checking account or something like that. If I want to sort my data, although it's not a big deal, but it can make the sorting of your data a little bit easier when you're trying to filter or something like that to, to drill down on something. And then on the credit card side of things over here, it's now flipped because it's because it's it's negative because now we have more payments, but we'll deal with that with the beginning balance thing. Now we have a transfer, which kind of does the same thing as this credit card payment. It still does the same function because like the expenses are the things that are increasing the liability. You would like the payment that you're making that's going the other way. That's bringing the liability back down to be something different. And so a transfer kind of serves that purpose fine. But they also have, of course, the credit card payment, which also serves that purpose fine. So I'm not sure exactly what added benefit the credit card payment serves, but they have a specific form for the credit card payment. So I would obviously suggest using that because that's the format they're going to use. But just note, you might think like, why do I have all these forms that could record the same transaction? Is it wrong if I record? Do I, are my books going to be totally messed up? No, that's kind of the, the reason. You do have other options you can use to make those payments. The credit card payment form might not be the first form that comes to mind. When you first try to set this stuff up, you might have been making credit card payments with checks before because that's how you would pay off the credit card. That's totally fine. Uh, but it's given you a different... But this way, bank to bank gives you a differentiation factor. And again, I think it would be like if you're trying to get more detailed and you're trying to make a system that's going to work best going forward obviously you might want to use the credit card form because that'll give you a distinguishing factor 
and it'll always be a decrease to the checking account that you're paying from and it will always decrease the liability account down here and then possibly use transfers for of course the interbank transactions that are going from a checking to savings or checking to checking and you might want to come up with a system where the transfer for example always decreases the checking account maybe right and if it goes from a savings account to the checking account you know then maybe you want to record it as just a deposit or so i don't i don't know so you could you can come up with your your system between those items but the journal entry is always the same if you've if you've learned like bookkeeping in a classroom you're probably going but the journal entry is the same right it's just doing the same thing and that's true but the sorting data is where it gets a little it, it gets a little messy when you're going back in and trying to filter all this stuff and all that kind of stuff and it could make a difference for that kind of of thing so those are going to be the the bank feed to bank feed stuff so we still have this beginning balance issue here that's why we have this negative balance which probably wouldn't be tying out at this point in time to what's on the credit card statement so we'll do the bank reconciliation and credit card reconciliations and deal with that beginning balance issue in uh, a future presentation that would only be there in the event that you that you didn't start your credit card from scratch with a zero balance but you already had a balance prior to when you started doing the bank feeds and setting up the bank feeds